idea I'm giving to it. No. Hi. Oh, uh, wonderful. Bev, have you told the raw that um, it's only going to be 40 minutes? Yeah. The, yes, Bev and he did, said, um, okay, uh, this is the best that we can do at the moment. He was fine with it. As long as he knew about it, you know, that was yeah. okay. Yeah, that's absolutely he's fine. Not on yet, and he's not, he hasn't started coming on. Beulah's struggling to get on. I don't know why. She's sending me messages that it doesn't, she doesn't can't get on. Hi, Haley. Hello, Felicia. How are you? Okay, so so. Uh, as you? usual. Yeah. I'm sorry. I. Okay. <laughs> See, we've changed the the dress code. You guys have gone into summer. It's freezing today. Boiling really yeah. cold. That we are actually melting. Oh. oh. Okay. Hi, Ke. I oh, yeah, actually turned on my aircon. I have to go out. I can't see Karen. I saw her. Whoops. God. Eh? Yeah. She said Please. no, she said she had an issue. She was going to log off. Ah, okay. Yes, <coughs> it's healthy. No, everybody's coming on, but I don't see Rabbi Kotska yet. Hey, Gab's not on. But his grandson was on. You will come on. Hang on. Hello, Sam. How's it? How's it, Benji? Benji, all oh, well, thank you. Yeah, that's <clears> not I'm just year. waiting for some last more. Year. Karen's not there. So who yeah. forgot you? We've got Haley. Oh, hi, Benji. Yeah. How are you? All oh, well. Thank, thank God. Yeah, no, thank God you don't. Waiting to see. Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay, Your there? family okay, Benji? Yes, yeah, we are, thank you, thank God. Uh, both in Israel and here, we're all well. Cape Town also. Good, good. Uh, I hear that in Israel, more than 9,000 a day. Well, a lot for Israel. <coughs> we had 9,000 a day. Oh, don't stick to the... the, the <laughs> Good evening. Uh, good evening, Arav. Uh, How are you? Not good. Yeah. <coughs> Hello. Are you Rabbi? Rabbi. How is everybody? Yeah. Uh, Rocha, we all just count our brochas every day. Yeah, we need the brocha every day. Now things are going very badly here with the corona. Uh, a very increase of uh, people who were uh, infected and even young people. Yeah. So one has to be very careful. And we, I got, uh, we got already two injections, but nevertheless, I say that we must be very careful. So. Uh, Obviously, I'm sure that everybody was shocked about Rebbe Meisels, and I, uh, I will maybe devote the show tonight uh, to his memory, let him rest in peace, and uh, plead for the community that uh, he, so, he so much was loved by. I know that we have got a short uh, time now because uh, I heard from where is uh, Beverly is still here uh, that we've got 40 minutes so we'll try to just concentrate on some some main points which I think it's uh, important Parshat Vaera we are now talking about already Moshe <clears throat> started last week. He was a little bit disappointed when after he saw uh, Paro and uh, things became worse. And as, I, as we discussed last week, 
Moshe was very upset and he actually had a, a complaint to Hashem. You did uh, say that you are going to uh, release them and things became worse. And this parasha starts, apparently the beginning means to respond to Moshe and uh, to say to him, he said to him, where is it? I was, according to Chazal, when he says, I, uh, in the beginning, I appeared to Avram, to Yitzchak and Yaakov by the name of God, but, my na- uh, but by my name, I was not known to them. By, by, by my name, the Lord, I was not known to them. So there is a lot of... Uh, suggestion, what did God mean to say? Uh, on one end, there is a little bit of uh, shtoch to Moshe that I had uh, so many, uh, the Avraham, Yitzhak, Yaakov, they also had difficult times, but they never complained and accepted. And here you complain, and obviously we understood why he complained, because he felt for them, he could, he, as we discussed last week, he couldn't see how they suffer. I'll call, uh, on, on, at, any, at any case, Hashem said, you can see, I will make things now in a different way. And here comes the different way, obviously talking about the 10 plagues, which were very much unnatural things. We have to understand what was the aim of the plagues, one thing. And the second thing, what, what, uh, what did they achieve with these plagues? You can say, but the first thing is, when, when uh, Moshe uh, was told to go and tell the people, that, to t- tell Paro, to tell Paro, Go and tell Paro what I'm going to tell you, and he will send them. Moshe said, is saying, Behold, the children of Israel have not heard, heard to me. How then shall Paro hear me? So Moshe says he was like talking in kind of desperation. How can I convince convince Paro if the Bnei Israel themselves are not listening? Uh, and it could be very well that to some degree, although that we said before, they didn't hear because because of short, short breath and, and the heavy labor. And uh, we say usually what, what makes a feel that you feel what you are working, if you are, if you believe in what you are doing if you have got a positive thinking, then your work is not hard. When are you feeling that it's difficult? When you are negative about it. It could be very well that Moshe meant to say, 
בני ישראל themselves are not so keen to live, and as we saw, we saw, when we will see later parashot, that were complaints to Moshe, why did you take us from Egypt? So they could not face difficulties. But at any rate, the, when Hashem says to him, go and tell Paro, and the, the plagues will be, seems to be not just, it's not just, kind of punishing. The main thing is education. We are doing Mitzrayim. And Mitzrayim shall know that I am the Lord when I stretch out my hand upon Mitzrayim and bring out the children of Israel from among them. And this goes, the, if you noticed the parasha, This is mentioned that I will make them know so many times. So there is kind, not only Paro is punished and, and, uh, for what the way that he treated the Jews. And some uh, uh, commentators see that each, each uh, plague came as Midah Kenegen Midah, um, and punishment for what they did. Like, let's say the first uh, plague was uh, the blood. Some, uh, there is in Chazal that this is for the blood that they shed, uh, blood of the Jews said that, that Paro was actually bathing himself in the Jewish blood. And so there is a possibility to see that each plague came as a punishment. But more is, and the plague was to teach Mitzrayim, as he says, we are doing Mitzrayim, to make them to know who is God and giving Paro a chance every time to change his mind. Otherwise, my, Hashem could actually bring the final plague and finish, but he didn't do that. He wanted to give a chance to Paro to realize and to change his uh, ways. So I call it education, to educate Paro to understand who is God. But at the same time, it was also education for the Jewish people themselves. As we discussed, uh, Jews were already so deep in the assimilation, in the culture of, uh, of the Egyptian culture, that they needed to be pulled out from it. So it wasn't just to get them, to free them from the hard labor, but they had actually to come out from the way they uh, related to God. So by seeing the plagues, it would also give an education to, to the people that they should strengthen their belief in Hashem. <coughs> The main uh, problem, which is being a difficulty here, which is discussed in many ways, how come that Paro gets the plagues and he doesn't 
make uh, any move until the last one, 10 plagues. Moshe comes and he warns him. So in the first one or two, the Khartoumim, uh, three plagues, is uh, magicians could do similar things. And therefore he didn't take seriously because he could, he could think that uh, Moshe and Aaron, who both of them came to talk and they did what they did, maybe they're just as kind of magicians. It's not serious. But later comes another one, another one which the magician couldn't do. And yet, Paro is stubborn. So in the beginning, it says, the Paro Vayechazak left Paro Velo Shema Alem. Paro's heart was ardent, and he hasn't uh, hearkened to them. Which Hashem said to Moshe in the beginning, this is going to happen. But in the later, after the fifth uh, plague, then it says, Vayechazek Hashem et lev paro. Hashem hardened his, his, uh, his heart. So the question is, very, very a difficult question. What does it mean that Hashem hardened his heart? It means Hashem made him not to, not to listen. We know there is a freedom of choice, that this is one of the principles, major principles, that everybody makes his own choice to go to do good or bad. And I come now that Hashem interferes and he does not let him do good. Hashem hardened his heart. This is a, a very, very major question. So there are a couple of uh, important answers, which gives us a quite a, to understand ourselves. The Rambam says, and the Rambam is the one that elaborates a lot about the freedom of choice. He says, A person has got a freedom of choice. But when a person sins, Hashem punishes him. A person can, um, can sin to such a degree that as a punishment, Hashem does not let him do tshuva. So in the beginning, you had the freedom of choice. The parol, he chose the wrong way. Vayechazak lev parol. He hardened his heart. But after a couple of times, he became so, such a wicked person that Hashem withdrew his possibility to be good. As a punishment, this is a, a, a very heavy uh, thing that a, per, a person can go, can go low, so low, that even if he wants to be good, he can't be good. Hashem now already made him to remain wicked. This is something that um, it's, it's actually frightening. Although, Anna says 
No, there is no such a thing. A person will always be able to do tshuva, even if he's the law of the lowest, but it becomes very difficult for him after, after become, be, be, let's say, being addicted to do the wrong things, then it, it will be very, very, very difficult for him to change. The other, the other uh, possibility that a, a person got freedom of choice, but in order to balance the freedom of choice, in other words, when Hashem made brought the, the first two or three plagues, the freedom of choice is not balanced anymore. Because if you see such miracles, everything becomes blood and the, all the other things, then you, you can't do wrong. Because this should already made the change to be good. So Hashem hardened his heart, in other words, to retain his freedom of choice. That in order that he should continue to have the freedom of choice, Hashem had to interfere and to say, uh, you can find excuses for what you see. And this is what happened uh, to Baro. So they also interesting, Thing. Um, I think the Khatam Sofer says when that in the beginning of the parasha when Hashem says I didn't to to, to Avram Tzak I didn't reform such a, a big miracle in other words what is a miracle to do things which is against the law of nature because they did not need to see it. But Mne Israel, as I said, in Mitzrayim were so deep in, in the Egyptian culture that in order to pull them out, Hashem had to make these great miracles which um, was not necessary to do it for their ancestors. There is one interesting point at the end of the parsha. The after the the barad. The Barad. In the end of the parasha, uh, when the whale, Hashem is in him, and Tirmachar, Barad Kaved. I will cause to rain a very grievously hail. And he gave them, he said to them, to, to Paro, send therefore now and gather your cattle and all that you asked in the field for upon every man and beast which shall be found in the field and they shall not be brought to home, the hell shall come down and they shall die. And some of the people, Ayared Var Hashem, some of the Egyptians did it, and they collected their uh, servants and the cattle, and those that didn't, 
uh, left it there. And then when came the Barad and made this uh, tremendous disaster, Paro called Moshe and Aaron, 27, and Paro said and called Moshe and Aaron and said to them, I have seen this time. Hashem is righteous, and I and my people are wicked. And he asked him to pray, to stop the hail, etc., etc. So what makes Obviously, afterwards, he didn't, uh, it still changed his mind. But what happened on this point that we don't find that he made such a admission that Hashem is a righteous, why is he here? So there is an interesting thought here. Because if Hashem wanted to punish him, why give him a warning to collect the cattle? Why should he say to him, go and collect the cattle? They should, he shouldn't even tell him that. Let them be there and suffer from the hell. So it seems to me that on this point, at least for a moment, Paro realized that Hashem actually is not just punishing him to kill him or to, to, to destroy him because otherwise he would not give them a notice to collect, to, to collect the, the people and, and the cattle. So this is interesting that it made some uh, change for a moment, but it wasn't enough. And the, the purpose of the, of the uh, plagues until the end, that the regret of, of the tshuva, the, the repentance that was expected of, of Paro, that he should be with conviction, not just because he, he suffers. And this took time until it came to the end, which we'll read in the next parsha uh, with the final blow. There is another point, which I believe you've got another couple of minutes. Before Hashem says that uh, that people should ask the, the, the Egyptians where is it? He asked them to ask for some uh, some gold and silver, it seems like as, a, as if to borrow, because it says uh, the verb is lishon, to ask for, as if, as if was just to borrow to give us a loan, but we know it wasn't a loan, they asked them to ask from their neighbors valuable things, which after they came out, in fact, they came out with this uh, valuable things, as Hashem promised Avraham, and he said they will be uh, an enslavement by Vachrechen Yetzur Berchush Gadol. 
At the end, they will come out with a lot of assets. So what was the point? It was not, it was not just to borrow as it was like a, a deception. They asked for it. And what was the justification to have it? And this is because would be kind of a compensation for the hard work that they did to working there for the Egyptians. There is a law which based on the same principle that the Torah says when a person had a slave that was working for him, he should when, he's, uh, uh, when, he, when he terminates his time in uh, slavery, the boss, the master, the employer should give him an endowment when he leaves. And so the same principle which we see here that was established that the Egyptian for, for the work that these, uh, the Jews ma made for them, they were entitled to have some kind of a compensation, kind of the endowment. And this is what Hashem said to, to them to be ready for that, that they should start collecting this uh, wealth. Because I said, uh, as uh, Rashi brings, and Hashem, like said, I promised Avraham when they go, come out, they will come with the, as wealthy people. So they should be ready for that and to be able to ask, to, stamp, to start to collect these uh, valuable things from, uh, from the Egyptians. So they are, uh, they tried, I tried very, very uh, short um, to, to put certain things. So what we can learn, the main thing is, which about the freedom of choice, that everybody has got a freedom of choice and everybody has to understand that the freedom of choice can be uh, something that Hashem might withdraw if we don't choose, if we don't choose it properly, if we became um, addicted to, to do wrong things and we don't learn from what Hashem started to teach us, it can be so, such a, a, a terrible thing that there is no return. It's a one way and no return. And this would re, uh, happen really with Sparrow. In the beginning, he was the one that he took the, the wrong way. And afterwards, by being so... Rav, we only have uh, two minutes left. Yeah, Rav, it's going to go off in a minute. No, it's, uh, uh, I, think, I think we'll finish here. Okay, it's good timing. <laughs> One second. It's good timing, uh, Rav. Okay. Thank you, Rav. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Shavuot Tov, and thank you very much. Thank you. Sorry. Uh, uh, hello? 